Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Greetings to you, my sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus. This is, wow, what a great day this is. I, I said uh, one day last week that the month of May was going to be wonderful, and I listed out three reasons why the month of May was going to be wonderful. One, because my, my 31st wedding anniversary is in the month of May, and two, my birthday is in the month of May, and three, we get to celebrate Mother's Day. I, I love being able to celebrate people and lifting folk up. I believe that's what we're called to do as members of the body of Christ. We're called to glorify God and to lift one another up. And so we get to celebrate moms, not only moms, but we get to celebrate aunties, not only aunties, but we get to celebrate grandmothers. We get to celebrate every uh, woman who has nurtured us in our lives. And that's what we're gonna do today. Happy Mother's Day, happy uh, Nurturing Day. If you've ever impacted anyone in their lives as, as a, a lady, I believe you're, you're going to be celebrated here today. It is May the 8th. We also say it's the fourth Sunday of Easter. We're still celebrating the Easter season, although we've taken a break away from our lectionary scriptures so that we could focus and celebrate on uh, Mother's Day so that we could encourage moms in their their work. Uh, also, I have several announcements that I'd like to share, I'd like to drop in your hearing so that you can, uh, we all can be aware of them or what's happening in and around this place and in and around the faith community. The United Methodist Men will be meeting here on Tuesday. Uh, that's uh, this coming Tuesday, May the 10th at 7 p.m. I understand from Brother Ben Ashton, who is the uh, uh, leader of the United Methodist Men, that they will have a Zoom link as well, so you can find that in the trumpet and also in our uh, weekly blast. You will find the link so that you can uh, be with them if you don't choose to be in person. Also, we uh, started a new Bible study. It's called our Lectionary Bible Study. And this past Wednesday was our first time together. We had a great time. We're meeting in person in Bible study right here in this place each Wednesday at 11 a.m. from 11 till noon. And we're literally going over the lectionary text that we are preaching from uh, the following Sunday. So come be part of that. Our next gathering is May the 11th at 11 a.m. Come be part of an in-person Bible study. We continue also with our uh, Zoom Bible study, our Bible conversation as we call it. That will take place also on Wednesdays from 6.15 to 7.30. And this is by Zoom. You can link up with us. You'll find a link in the weekly trumpet, and also you'll find a link in the, um, in the blast, and come be part of that. The chancel choir will meet uh, next meeting, next gathering time here will be uh, Thursday, May 12th, and they'll be here at 7 p.m., so if you love to sing, come be part of that endeavor. The uh, United Methodist Women of Faith, the United Methodist Women of Faith are having a spiritual retreat, and it's going to take place via Zoom, and you're able to link up with them. You'll find a link in their uh, weekly trumpet also and one in the weekly blast. That'll take place uh, this coming week. It'll take place, um, um, I believe, on May the 15th. And Yes, May the 15th, that is correct. Also on May 15th, this is Sunday, May 15th, the United Methodist Women of Faith, they're going to be honoring some school students. And so their students will be here in this place and they will honor them and they will, will bless their lives. This is gonna be the class of 2022, the graduates of 2022, whether they're graduating high school or whether they're uh, graduating from a university, they're going to be celebrated here in this place on May 15th. We're gonna recognize them on Sunday, May the 15th. Also, uh, the United Methodist Women of Faith are asking that you would, uh, uh, they're looking for volunteers or sign up who will be part of their uh, missions day gathering. So this is going to take place at Rappahannock River District uh, at, um, at the, uh, hosted by Zion United Methodist Women of Faith. So Zion Church is located at 8700 Courthouse Road in Spotsylvania. And they're gonna be gathering on the 17th of May, I believe this is. And so they're asking that you would register. You stop by here and register. We have a, a, a registration uh, here at uh, the church. 
You can find that at Sister Lori's desk here at the church. Please come and be part of that so that the women can gather for their missions day. And again, this missions day will take place on the 17th and the deadline for registration is May 15th. Amen. Those are all the announcements that I have. Actually, I have one more. Uh, the, our good friends down at Dow Green United Methodist are inviting seniors to come to a breakfast on May 13th at 8 a.m. And the only thing you have to do is show up. Dow Green, our sister church, is right down the street here at uh, the Naval Base. If you come by, they will absolutely feed you until your heart is content and overflowing. Amen? Those are all the announcements that I have. If you have something that you'd like for us to announce, by all means, reach us here. You can uh, reach us here at trinitykg at verizon.net, or you can reach me personally um, at Kevin Elmore at VAUMC, or you can call the church, call the church office here at uh, area code 540-775-4501, uh, and we will absolutely get your announcement out to the world. Amen? Amen. Our call to worship my sisters and brothers in Christ comes from a good place. It comes from uh, the heart of someone, some unknown writer. I have uh, borrowed this uh, call to worship. I thought it was uh, celebratory of the women today. And it reads this way. Today we celebrate our mothers, grandmothers, aunties, and all women who have loved and nurtured us. Thank you, God, for uh, giving us mothers and grandmothers and aunties and all of the women who have loved and nurtured us. We remember with deep gratitude all the ways that they demonstrated their love to us. Sometimes we did not understand them, but we know that God understood. We take time today to remember mothers, grandmothers, aunties, and all of the women who have loved and nurtured us because their love is most like God's love. For their tears, for their hugs, for their wisdom, for their uh, unfailing trust and their in our abilities, we give thanks to God today for their love and nurture. Will you join with me in our opening prayer? Gracious God, we give you glory, praise, and honor for this day, for this opportunity to celebrate our moms, to celebrate all of the women who have impacted our lives. We give you glory, praise, and honor for the opportunity to be part of your church, to be part of the body of Christ. And now, God, we pray that your Holy Spirit would meet us here, meet us around the throne that we might be able to celebrate one another. Meet us, God, and unite our hearts and our minds together that we might worship you. Bless our time together like only you can. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray now that you would join us in our opening hymn, our opening hymn, Tell Out My Soul. Tell Out My Soul, hymn number 200. Join with us.
Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. That is a great song. I love that song. I haven't heard it in a while, but it is absolutely beautiful. My young brothers and sisters in Christ, I want to uh, chit-chat with you this morning. And I, I love this time that we have together, this time that we can, we can just simply talk. And, and it, it's uh, more than um, a sermon to me when we get together and, and talk. I, I, I don't look at sermons as monologues. I look at them as dialogues. We get to talk to one another and hopefully uh, learn from one another. Today, as we, we get to celebrate um, our, our moms, the, the, the ladies in our lives, it is um, one of those uh, times where I, I love this. I, I get to celebrate my mom. I get to celebrate my sisters and get to celebrate my wife, Karen, and, and my daughter and, and all of the women in my life. I get to celebrate them because I believe that they do a, a great work in, in raising and nurturing us. So today I want to talk to you briefly about uh, nurturing the next generation or nurturing the next gen. And that's who you are. You are the next generation. You are the ones that are, are being fed uh, valuable information. The scripture that I've chosen this morning to talk from is Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 9 and Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verses 4 through 9. And I, I, I believe it speaks to uh, all of us and what uh, we're called to do, but in particularly, we want to uh, chit-chat about our, 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 our moms, the, the, the ladies in our lives. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for uh, the gift of, of mothers and, and the gifts of aunts and sisters and all of the women in our lives. God, we pray now that by your spirit and power, you would speak to us Open our eyes that we might see, our ears that we might hear, and our hearts that we might feel. Feel your spirit, feel your power, and that we might be able to celebrate with joy and gladness those in our lives. Bless our time together in Jesus' name. Amen. In the book of Deuteronomy, uh, Moses is, uh, uh, we believe, the writer, and he is summing up uh, the first four books of the Bible with the, the fifth book. So the first four books of the Bible, we call it the law of Moses or the law that God gave to Moses. And in the book of Deuteronomy, he sums up all that he's written with, within those first four books. In this particular space, he, he writes and he gives um, uh, a command or directive to uh, the families and to those who lead the families in particular. And he says in the fourth chapter of, of the book of Deuteronomy, he says this, Only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things you saw with your own eyes or let them fade away from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and their children after them. And then in the, the sixth chapter, in verses 4 through 9, he says this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your uh, soul, with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are uh, to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit down at your home and when you walk around the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So nurturing the next generation. In this particular lesson that Moses has given us, he's, he's, he's writing this, he's directing this to uh, our parents. And in particularly, he's writing this to our moms today or the women in our lives or those who have impacted our lives. And, and so in, in giving them this command and the command we understand is something that comes from God that God expects us to do. We don't have a choice of whether or not we do it. And so in this, he says, Moses says, hey, look, we, we're giving you this 
But you need to be careful so that you don't forget this. And then he says, teach it to the children. So when our parents come to us or, or whoever our, our guardians are and they give us instructions, and particularly if they are Christians and they give us these instructions to do or give us things that they want us to do, they're doing what God is asking. And it says here, when I looked up this word, it said that uh, the, the word uh, that he uses for uh, teach them, it means to instruct or to educate. So they are literally supposed to instruct or educate or teach us the things of God. And what do you say are the things of God? We are to tell our children, and, uh, and my mom, I can remember her sharing with me, that this is the way that God wants you to live. This is how God wants you to act. This is what God expects of you. And so all of these things, the, the, our parents, your parents, are, are going to share with you, and some of them we might not like. But they're doing, I believe, what God is asking them to do. Now, as we go further over into uh, Deuteronomy in the sixth chapter in verses four through nine, he says to them uh, in, in this particular space, he says to the, 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 the family, hey, listen, you, you're going to need to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And this is how you're going to be able to teach your family. So the, the parents, the moms and dads are, are in love with God and they're responsible for sharing that information with us. And he says it. He says in, in chapter 6 and verse uh, 7, he says, impress these on your children. Impress, the word impress means to say something so many times that it's etched in our mind, that it's etched on our heart. To say something so many times, to repeat it is what it means, so many times that we never forget it. I say stuff sometimes, my young brothers and sisters in Christ, and I say, I sound just like my mama, because she said it so many times, I can't forget it. And I, I say it again and again, and I know my children probably say, he sounds just like grandma because she said it so many times. I couldn't get rid of it. I couldn't get it out of my mind. And that's what Moses is asking the, the moms to do and the parents and the aunts and the, the uncles. He's asking all of us as adults to share this information with you as young people. And so when our parents come to us, when your parents or your guardians come to you with information, be kind and generous because they're only following the instructions that God has given them to nurture the next gen, to nurture the next generation. Amen? Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for all that you've given us. You've given us this life together as, as your children. You've given us uh, uh, time to share with one another, to be involved in one another's lives, to impact one another's lives. And so we're grateful grateful for the time that we have together. Lord, we love you, we praise you, and give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God's divine word, my sisters and brothers in Christ, it comes from a familiar place. It comes from the book of Deuteronomy, and we've read Deuteronomy over the years. That's why I can say it's a familiar place. It comes from Deuteronomy chapter 4, and verse 9, and then chapter 6 and verses 4 through 9. Hear what Moses writes for us today. Only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them fade from your heart as long as you live. Teach them to your children and their children after them. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. And these commandments that I give you today are to be on your heart. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at your home and when you walk around the road, along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as a symbols, as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. For a few minutes, my sisters and brothers in Christ, I want to talk from the topic 
the nurturing the next gen, nurturing the next gen. Will you join with us in our opening hymn? Our opening hymn is a favorite of mine. It comes from the faith we sing, hymn number 2164, Sanctuary. Sing with us. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. That is a wonderful song. I love that song. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Let us pray, my sisters and brothers in Christ. Gracious God, you have called us today to celebrate mothers, to celebrate all of the uh, women in our lives, all of the women who have impacted our lives. And so as we uh, read through your word, we pray that your Holy Spirit would speak to us today. Speak to our hearts that we might be able to truly celebrate. Bless us as we uh, take a literary look at your word. Open our hearts that we might receive your word with gladness and joy. We pray for moms today, for all of those who have uh, nurtured someone, all of those who have been impactful in someone's life. Bless us and keep us and make your face to shine upon us during this hour. It is in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen. Nurturing the next gen. I, I was interested in my sisters and brothers in Christ as we approach uh, Mother's Day or the time that we set aside to call Mother's Day. I was interested in a couple different things. And so one of the things that I was interested in was uh, looking up the word mother and, and, and what that meant. And then uh, looking up uh, the word uh, nurturing and, and what that meant. Um, and one of the th reasons why was because as I was dealing with uh, where I would come from, where I would preach from, I, I was, my heart was overflowing with uh, this passage from the book of Deuteronomy, these two passages, because I, I understood that they, they spoke of teaching our children. Both of them do. do. And, and so when I went back and, and, and looked up the word uh, uh, for uh, those who would be uh, celebrated today, mothers in the scriptures, I found this um, definition in the uh, Old Testament. And it meant uh, as, as the bond of the family. That's literally what the word mothers mean uh, from the Hebrew, from the Old Testament. It, it means uh, as the bond of the family. And it, it literally means something that binds or fastens or connects or something that holds things together. And then I looked in the New Testament and I found this, and they use this um, word for mothers metaphorically in the New Testament, but it means the source of something. And I was like, wow, okay, Lord. And, and so then I, I went to find out where, where do I find the word nurture at in the scriptures or, or what does it mean to nurture someone or to nurture something? And so I found this in the, in the, in the scriptures and, and I found this in particularly in the, the, the New Testament and, and it means to educate or train up. It also means to uh, discipline and correction. And we don't necessarily want to hear that word discipline because we pour some different meanings into it. For me, I understand the word discipline and corrections mean to simply help somebody to understand. It doesn't necessarily mean to pull out a ruler or a belt or whatever the case may be or a switch and spank somebody. It simply means to show them the right way to go. But the word uh, nurture also means to instruct or to give instructions. 
And so all of these are, are part of, of this, this time that we share together in Mother's Day. I was taken aback by uh, my mom, she's 93, and the things that she did over the years as she uh, uh, have nurtured different people. I have uh, some folk in my family, my sisters and brothers in Christ, who call themselves siblings of mine who are not biologically my siblings. And the reason they do is because my mom over the years found it necessary or felt it necessary to, to, to help them, to help raise them up or to nurture them or to, to become something that they were missing in their lives. Not all of us, my sisters and brothers in Christ, have those, those great uh, family dynamics that we like to dream of. I have a sister-in-law who uh, had a, a rough upbringing and my mother, over the 30 years that she's been married to my brother, nurtured her in such a way that she calls my mother mother. And she really means it. And she is not biologically related to us. But because of, of the, the care and the, the, the nurturing and the, the, the willingness of, of my mother to step out and to do something in this woman's life and in several other people's lives, they've come to be part of our families. And that's what it is. I don't care that you have uh, children that are biologically yours or that you've adopted kids or whatever the case may be. The care that I believe that, that we get here from this particular passage, from these passages, the care that we get is that somebody somewhere in the family has nurtured someone. Somebody somewhere in the family has instructed and trained someone up in the right way that they go. The Bible submits to us that we ought to train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they are old, they shall never depart from it. In a recent conversation I had with a friend of mine who was uh, struggling with uh, uh, one of their, their sons, one of their adopted sons. And they were struggling with the fact that this son was out there on, on drugs and having uh, uh, battling addiction and all of the stuff. And, and we literally uh, talked together and, and, and just uh, embraced one another over the phone. That is that we would, we would not cease to pray for that person. And these are adopted children of, of theirs. They, they, we sometimes find people struggling and we sometimes find uh, people wanting to give up on one another. But because of, of, I believe, that we are called to nurture the next generation, we talked about extensively about not giving up, about holding on, about trusting God. Because every situation, my sisters and brothers in Christ, is not ideal in our families. Here are some people that struggle with um, raising children. Eve, the first mother in the Bible, lost one child at the hands of another. Rebecca, Isaac's wife, struggled with showing favoritism to one son over another. Jochebed, a caring and nurturing woman, had to give up her son Moses. And so we are reminded in these stories that not everything is ideal, that sometimes my sisters and brothers in Christ, sometimes uh, caring for ourselves is a struggle. And then when we bring in children, when we bring in someone else, it can be downright overwhelming. In our lesson today, we find Moses giving instructions to the children of Israel, to the Israelite community regarding their responsibility to nurture the next generation. In chapters 4 and verses 1 through 8, he says this to the community as he's, he's addressing them. He says, now Israel, hear the decrees and the laws I am about to teach you. Do not add to them. Do not subtract from them. Do not do anything but listen to them and apply them in your lives because here is what could happen. And he calls their remembrance to a time where uh, God had to deal with a group of people who were not listening to God's word. And so Moses reminds them of that. In verse 4, he says to them, but all y'all still here. Those of you who were obedient to God's word are still here today. And then he says in verse 6 of chapter 4, in which I found this to be interesting, he says in verse 6 of chapter 4, observe the decrees and the laws carefully. 
and by observing them, you will show wisdom and understanding to the nations around us. And so he's giving us the idea that when we observe God's word, when we are listening and obeying God's word, that we bear witness to the world around us. The world sees us and believes that we as believers in Christ Jesus, as followers of God, the world looks at us and says they have a good reputation. He continues in this, and he says in verse 7 of chapter 4, what other nation is so great that they have uh, their gods near them? As we have the Lord our God wherever we go and we pray to him. And so he, he continues to ask them a question. He says, and, and who other, what other nation is so great that they uh, have such righteous decrees and laws that have set before them today? And so he reminds them that God, Yahweh, has given them all of these laws and decrees so that they can witness to their children and so that they can impact the world around them. We pick it up, my sisters and brothers in Christ, in verse 9 of chapter 4. And he says this, only be careful to obey, be careful to watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them fade from your heart as long as you live. And then he says, uh, the, the kicker for us, teach them to your children and their children after them. Teach them to the next generation, to the generation after them and to the, the next generation. And so he's asking us to be intentional about teaching God's, the things of God to our children. Moms, you guys do such a great job. Your, your work is so vast, it's almost mind-bending that, that you have been called to labor and to teach and instruct the, the, the next generation. I, I submit to you, my sisters and brothers in Christ, I watch my wife Karen and how she nurtures our children today, even as they're young adults, and how she nurtured them over the years. My relationship with our children, uh, uh, and sometimes I look at Karen's relationship with our children and, and with an envious eye because my relationship with our children was I had to give you this information and I didn't have time to play around with you. I didn't have time to mess around. Here is information that I believe that you need and you need this information right away and I didn't have time not to have time. I wish someone had told me that I should have been their biggest supporter that I should have been their greatest cheerleader. But I watch Karen and the way she interacts with them and the way that she uh, continues to interact with them, and she was intentional about passing on the things of God. And I love that about her. I love that she taught our children these things. And verse 9 calls for us to do that. In chapter 6 and verses 4 through 9, we find the challenge of the church. In God's word, there is always uh, uh, a challenge for the world, there is a challenge for the church, and then there is the good news. In chapter 4, and in verses uh, uh, 4 through, chapter 6, verses 4 through 9, uh, we find this, the challenge for the church. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, God is one. And so what it does is it pours into the church saying, no, this is the God that we serve. This is the only God that we serve. It's not gods around us. It's not gods who, who may be our cars or it may be our houses or it may be our money. No, this is the one God that we pour into. And so he reminds the church of that. And then he says something that I found was so interesting. I, 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 I almost jumped out of my chair. It says, here is how you interact with God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. That's how we are to interact with God. That's how the body of Christ is to see God. And then he says this today in verses 6 through uh, 9, which is the good news. Moms, aunties, sisters, all of those who have impacted children, this is your day. And I hope and pray that your, your children or somebody in your life that you've impacted has honored you today before we got here to this place. I believe that if they have not, then they ought to honor you when we leave this place. Somebody ought to say something good about you if you've impacted their lives. And here is what he says. 
This is the good news. These commandments I give you today are to be in your heart. And so he says, these commandments, these instructions that I'm giving you, these commandments ought to be so ingrained in us. They, they ought to be such a part of our entire being that someone around us is able to, to see that we are in love with God. Someone around us ought to be able to see that, that we've been impacted by God. And then he says in verse 7, to impress them on your children. To impress them. The word impress here means to repeat or it means to compel, or it means to engrave. We ought to be, as, as parents, as moms and dads, and as, as women who have impacted someone's life, we ought to be so in tune with the God that we love that we ought to be able to repeat and compel and engrave things on people's hearts so that they never forget it. And then he says, tie them as a symbol on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. The symbols on your hands and forehand is, is simply a metaphor for how we uh, can use God's word or God's laws or God's word in everyday aspects of our lives. And I see it. I see it in the women of God around me. I see it in the, the, the people who interact and I, I see their lives as they're impacting people around them. And I see it in every aspect of their lives. You can tell someone who is in a relationship with Jesus right away. And he says to write them on the door frames of your heart, to write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. And, and this is important for the next generation. This is important to nurture up the next generation that someone is able to see our lives, that someone is able to see and understand that the way that we're going, the way that we're living is important enough for us to continue to walk in it. It says this, that the individual must uh, I must also be able to write them on their individual hearts and, and display them to someone. Not only that, but the, gate, the door frames and the gates were considered the family's homestead. This was the place where the family finds security. This was the place where the family would find shelter. This was the place, the main gathering of the family. The family was able to nurture the next gen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you will join with me, my sisters and brothers in Christ, as we uh, sing together our hymn of praise. Our hymn of praise is hymn number 569. We have a story to tell the nations. We have a story to tell the nations. Join with me.
Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. That is a great song. We have a story to tell the nations. And, and that's how the Bible puts it, that as we, as the body of Christ, as the church operates, the nations around us will see and they will give glory to God because of our actions and our obedience. We have a story to tell the nations. Let us affirm our faith, my sisters and brothers in Christ. Our affirmation of faith comes from the Nicene Creed. And the Nicene Creed is that time where we share together what we believe and why we believe it. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and, and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternal begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and was incarnated of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to, in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit and the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue to share in our uh, time of offering in our time of giving, my sisters and brothers in Christ, we believe that God loves a cheerful giver. And so that's why we give. We don't give out of comparison. We don't give because someone is pressing us into service. We give because God has blessed us. And so we're simply giving back to God a portion of that which God so has richly given to each of us. And so during this time, you can send your gifts of tithes and offerings to this place. You can send them to Trinity United Methodist Church, uh, Attention Financial Secretary, P.O. Box 155, uh, King George, Virginia, 22485. Or you can send them electronically. We have an electronic porter. You can portal. You can reach us at www.trinitykg.org. And if you go there, you will find a way to give electronically. If you're a member of Trinity, you are obligated to give to support your local church. If not, if you're not a member, we will absolutely receive your gifts and we will give God glory on your behalf. Amen? Amen. Share with us in our doxology, my sisters and brothers in Christ. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. We continue to uh, love on one another through our joys and concerns. And I say this again and again and again. I believe that every service, every worship service, every time we gather, we ought to have a spot where we have joys and concerns, where we share with one another what God is actively doing in and through our lives. If not a joy and concern, then I don't know necessarily what God is doing for you. And so with joys and concerns, we get to share with one another, what God is actively doing in and through our lives. If we have an anniversary, or if you have a birthday, May 27th, or something like that happening, by all means, share that with us, and that we might be able to interact with one another about what God is doing. You can reach us here if you have a, a joy or a concern here at the church at area code 540-771-4501, or you can reach us by email. So my email address, my personal email address is Kevin Elmore 
at baumc.org, or you can reach us here at the church at trinitykg at verizon.net. All of those ways are acceptable ways to reach us so that we can find out what God is doing. Because we believe as United Methodists that God is a present help in the time of trouble, that God is presently active in our lives each and every second, every minute, every hour, every day. And so let us hear from you. Amen? Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for uh, life and for the gift of eternal life. Thank you that you are interacting with us, that you are providing uh, your, your gifts to us, that you are providing mercy and care and concern for us. God, we're grateful today that you've provided us with all of the women in our lives, those who have impacted and nurtured us throughout the years. We're so grateful. God, we, we just are joyful about that. We pray for those who have, uh, our sisters and brothers in Christ who have gone on to glory. We pray for the families who, who are struggling with stuff. We pray, God, that you would have your way in and through each of our lives. Lord, we love you. We praise you for uh, just being God, just being in our lives, for just giving us the abilities to interact with one another. Hear our prayers as we echo them through uh, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you will join with me, my sisters and brothers in Christ, in our closing hymn. Our closing hymn is uh, Oldie But Goodie. I learned this when I was just about a young kid in vacation Bible school. And it's Pass It On. And it's hymn number 572 in our Methodist hymnal. Pass it on. Sing with us. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. I'm going to make that song my theme song. I, I love that song just that much. From now on, Pass It On is going to be my theme song. I'm going to sing it every time I see somebody, every time I get together. I love that song. 
Let us go into our closing. Let us receive the benediction, my sisters and brothers in Christ. Gracious and all-wise God, to you we give glory, praise, and honor. You're our mother. You're the mother, the greatest mother that any of us have ever known. Jesus declared this, O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that injures and hurts its prophets. Oh, how I long to gather you together as a, a hen gathers her chicks. But you were not willing God, use us today in someone else's life that we might be able to change their lives or see them to have a need to change. Use us to impact someone else's life. Thank you for those who, who impacted us, who nurtured and loved us. You've called us to nurture and love the next generation. God, go before us now and prepare our way. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the throne of grace. To that same God, we give glory, praise, dominion, power, now and forevermore. And the people of God said, Amen, Amen, and Amen.